What is up YouTube? This is Nanashi with a brand new deck profile video. This time I'll be showing you the updates to my old fashioned beast deck. The deck hasn't seen a tremendous number of choices, especially since the deck's formula actually kind of works as it was. But given the release of a couple of specific cards from the ban list and a couple of changes that this deck has honestly been needing for a while, I thought it was time to do an update video, especially since I haven't done one since, what was it, October, November? Let's see where this goes. Starting with the monsters of level 3 or lower, we have a pair of Key Mouse, who if destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can search a level 3 or lower beast type monster from your deck to your hand, and there is plenty of targets for this, but I more than often not use it for a level 1 tuner. Basically the same with Fable Cat Sith, except its effect is that if it's sent from your hand to the graveyard, you get to select a face of card on the field and destroy it. Uniflora, Mythical Beast of the Forest, I'm sorry, Mystical Beast of the Forest, says if all the monsters in your graveyard are beast type, you can tribute him and special summon a beast type monster from your hand or grave, except another copy of himself, but it cannot attack this turn. Now Kalantosa is a brother to Uniflora, whose effect is that if it's special summoned by the effect of a beast type monster, you can target a card on the field and destroy it. So it's perfect setup for Uniflora. Another card that it chains well with is Valerifon, who is a two star beast type tuner who says that you can discard a card, target a level 2 or lower beast type monster from your grave and accept another copy of itself, and special summon it in face up attack position or face down defense position, and you can only use its effect once per turn, but it sets off the Kalantosa play as well. Triple Gallus the Star Beast. I love this card because it gives the potential of not only summoning itself, but also doing a bit of damage. Because you can reveal it in your hand and excavate the top card of your deck. If it's a monster, then you get the special summon it and deal 200 damage to your opponent times its level. And only two lock cats. If it's normal summoned, you get the special summon a level 1 monster from your graveyard with its effects negated. Next we move into the monsters of level 4 and higher. Starting with the triple chain dog, if it's in the graveyard and you have exactly two beast type monsters, you can special summon it from the graveyard, but you banish it when it leaves the field. Easiest way to get around this little problem is by using it as a Xyz material, and you can do so if you use it with Nefarious Archie Eater of Nefariousness. God, that name's a mouthful. If it's in the graveyard, you can, during your opponent's end phase, you can target a monster you control, destroy it, and if you do, you special summon this. But bear in mind, you can only control one of this at a time. So it's not exactly the easiest monster to use its effect for, it's more just a counterpart for Chain Dog, as well as Rescue Cat who is finally off the ban list. You can tribute this card on your side of the field to special summon two level three or lower beast type monsters from your deck. Their effects are now negated if they're summoned this way and they are destroyed during the end phase. Level five tuner egotistical eight. You can only special summon it from your hand and you have to discard a beast type monster from your hand to do it. But when you do, you get to increase or decrease its level by the level of the monster you discard it. Or you can just leave it as it is. And Green Baboon, Defender of the Forest. These two guys say that if it's in your hand or graveyard and you lose a monster, a beast type monster specifically, and it's sent to the graveyard, you get the special summon it at the cost of a thousand points. Because of its wording loophole, it only works if it's destroyed by card effect, not by battle. Moving into the spell lineup, we have Triple Airs Rock Sunrise. You target a beast in your graveyard and special summon it, and if you do, all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls lose 200 attack for each beast, plant, and winged beast in the grave. And you can only play one of this a turn, but this card has won me games because usually I end up with a large number of beast type monsters in my graveyard by the time my main phase is ready to end. Double Dark Hole for obvious reasons, and I am planning on putting this back into all my decks eventually in the main. Double MST. I'm thinking about putting Twin Twisters in here in place of MST purely because I do have a lot of beast monsters that deserve to be in the grave more than they need to be in my hand. But for right now, MST is fine. And Triple Obedience School. If you control no monsters, you can special summon up to three level two or lower effect monsters, all with different names, but they, their effects are negated and they are destroyed during the end phase. And you can only special summon beast type monsters during the turn you play this, but again, given that this deck is entirely beast type, that means that that is not a problem. Now we move into the trap lineup. Single bottomless trap hole, pretty much a staple in every deck that I have. Triple Horn of the Phantom Beast. 
It equips itself to a Beast or Beast Warrior type monster, giving it 800 attack points, which means it can be played during the damage step. And if the monster would happen to destroy an mo opponent's monster in battle, you get to draw a card. But it does have to send it to the graveyard, so unfortunately, Pendulums will not trigger it. And the single Solemn Warning, which is pretty much a staple in everyone's deck. Next, we move into the side deck, which has a nice little variety of cards. Starting with the additional copies of the second Uniflora, the third Lockcat, the third Nefarious Archery Eater of Nefariousness, still hating on that name, and the third Green Baboon Defender of the Forest. We also have a Brain Control, which I am planning on citing in pretty much every deck, because being able to steal a monster, regardless if it's only able to be normal summoned or set, is still valuable in the long run, especially with the new upcoming format coming up, we'll probably see a lot more main deck plays. Foolish Burial, which is mainly just to drop the Chain Dog into the graveyard, but it's there in the event that I need to speed things up a little bit. Compulsory Evacuation Device, Double Fiendish Chain, Double Memory Loss, Mirror Force, Double Super Rush Recklessly, which was a tech card I used to run in the main, but now it's more appropriate in the side. You target a face-up beast-type monster you control and a monster your opponent controls. You destroy your target and you send your opponents back into the deck. This actually triggers the effect of Green Baboon, which lets itself be summoned from the graveyard, which was the main reason I ran this, but running it just for the sake of a single monster getting an additional summon at the cost of a thousand life points and a monster you already controlled just kind of wasn't worth it. Also running Torrential Tribute. And now we finish up with the extra deck, starting with the single copy of Fable Unicorn, which I am now able to abuse fairly often. It requires a Fable Tuner, which is what the one star is for, and its effect is that if both players have the same number of cards in their hand, then all your opponent's card effects are negated. Double Naturia Beast, which this deck is able to summon easier than any other card in this extra deck, except maybe Thunder Unicorn. And Naturia Beast is honestly more valuable than Thunder Unicorn because it can negate any spell card by milling two cards off the top of your deck, which just blows your grave, preferably with those Chain Dogs and Nefarious Archery Eaters. Thunder Unicorn, though, is still useful. You can reduce your opponent's monster's attack points by 500 for every monster you currently control, but only this card can attack the turn you do this. Double Voltic Vicorn, though, is uh, kind of fun, too. If it's destroyed by battle of card effect, you get to mill 7 from each player's deck. Lightning Tricorn is the brother of Voltic Vicorn and Thunder Unicorn, the big brother, in fact, because if it were to be destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you get the special summon of Unicorn or a Bicorn out of your grave. So it keeps uh, fairly consistent power play and or mill play going. I also have a copy of Nachuria Leo Drake, which is just a 3000 beat stick, it's not really anything important. Honestly, its upgrade, Leo the Keeper of the Sacred Tree, is much better. It's only 100 points stronger, but it also has the effect of protects it from being targeted by opponent's card effects, except during your main base too, so it's very useful. Double Ronin Raccoon Sandayu. Requires two level 2 beast type monsters, which is easy to pull off considering the cards that I run. It cannot be destroyed by battle of card effect if you control another beast type monster, so if you happen to control two of it, it's pretty much just indestructible all the way around. And once per turn, you can detach a material to summon a token whose attack points instantly becomes equal to the highest monster's attack points on the field. Triple Diamond Direwolf, because that Chain Dog into Direwolf combo is still very powerful in this deck. Once per turn, you can detach a material from it to target a Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast monster you control, and a card your opponent controls and destroy both. And the single Sky Pegasus now. Once per turn, you can detach a material, target a card, your, a face a monster rather, your opponent controls, and tell them that they either have to let it be destroyed, or they pay a thousand points. And that is the deck. I am so glad that I was finally able to show off its minor upgrade, because frankly, I know it has been way too long since the last time I made an update for this deck. It's been needing it for a while, and the small choices that I made may not seem like a lot, but they do change the entire deck's flow and abilities on such an amazing scale that it's now in the top five of my favorite decks once again. I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile video, and if you can think of any ways that I can improve this little beast deck, feel free to let me know. But in the meantime, this has been Nanashi, signing out.